Hey guys, it's Ropsy, Book with Paperless Student. In today's video, I will be going through the changes in the files application since iPadOS. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. No doubt this application has improved dramatically. It's almost usable. Though personally, I'm still using Documents by Riddle, which is currently on its seventh version. So I'm using Document 7. And this is mostly because this application allows me to have complete control on how exactly I store my folders and how I manage my documents on my iPad. Apple has really improved how we interact and view our documents in the files application. And I'm starting to love it. On the side here, you have your location. Locations. This is an area containing a list of all the different cloud services you have on your iPad. You need to have these downloaded and logged in on your device for them to appear in your files application. This setup, I don't really like it. I hope that in the future we'll be able to log into different cloud services without needing to download all the different cloud services applications first on our iPad because that sort of defeats the whole purpose of having a centralized organization system if I still need to go and download each application independently because a lot of file managing applications allow me to do that already a lot of applications allow me to log into my cloud services even though i don't have an application for that cloud service on my ipad on your sidebar, you also get a list of the different applications that have managed to fully integrate your files application on this ipad i have pdf expert i have documents and Adobe Document Cloud. Accessing documents in these applications is very easy and intuitive in the files application. I can't wait till all my applications can do this. It will really simplify how we work on our iPads. You also get a section for local documents. These are the documents that are on your iPad. When you save a document to files from different applications, this is where you find it. Let's save a document from Notability. And here's my document. I just saved it from Notability and I can easily find it here. iCloud Drive is for all the documents you want to sync across all your devices. For example, I have my work in my iCloud Drive that I want to access on different devices. So instead of me having to move them around or airdrop them between my devices, I just put them in my iCloud Drive and I can access them from any device that I pick up. Any document that has this icon here means it is there in my iCloud drive, but it's not available on my iPad, which means that my iPad currently doesn't have a local copy of it. I can only access this file online. So if I wanted to access all my iCloud drive documents on my device, I would need to download them to my iPad. One thing I love about the files application is the fact that all my downloads go directly into my iCloud drive. This makes them very easy to access across my devices. And I really like this because recently I've been using my iPad Pro 2015 for downloading my documents. I've realized that my iPad Pro 2015 seems to be a better downloading device. My files download much better on my iPad Pro 2015 than it does on my iPad 2018. So what I do is I simply download my documents on my 2015 iPad Pro and then I come to my iCloud drive and I can access them on my iPad 2018. It's much easier for my iPad Pro 2018 to sync my iCloud drive when the documents are on my iPad Pro 2015. You have a section for your recently deleted documents and the application tells you where they got deleted from. This might just be useful. You can also arrange your documents according to tags, which you can easily edit if you want to. And this can really work if you're really into tagging your information. You will love using this feature. Personally, I don't find it that useful because I don't really use tags. So if you are a minimalist and you prefer not having too much information in your applications and you want to hide some stuff, it's very easy for you to hide your tags and hide your locations. 
You can even decide what cloud services you want to appear in your files app and that's actually very good. You can view your files according to name, according to date. Personally, I like arranging my notes and files according to date because then I can always easily find my most recently worked on notes and my most recently worked on documents. So I really like that. You can also arrange your notes according to size, to kind, according to tags. Your application allows you to look at your documents as thumbnails, which is what I've been using so far up to this point in this video. This is my preferred look because then I can see more documents on one page. I get a, a feel of what the page looks like so I know what I'm looking for. So I tend to use this one a lot more. But you can also view your documents as lists or as columns. I think most of us will like this column view because it gives you more information about the file that you're looking at. So you can preview the notes and it gives you information about the file that you're looking at. Useful information, might I add. You can open the file for a quick mockup session. Personally, I don't really mock up most of my documents. I have dedicated PDF annotating applications for that and I tend to use those, but I do use the mockup tool a lot with photos. So that's when I sort of find it more useful. Are any of you guys really using the mockup tool for PDF annotation? Any, any of you guys doing that? That would be very interesting to know. You can add tags to your documents and if you're not happy with the tag options you have here, this is where you get an opportunity to add your own new tags. You can share, copy and duplicate your files. These are just basic features and functions that you have in almost any application. You can compress your files. If your file is too big, you can just zip it right here in your files application. And I think this is a very good addition and a very good function, though I feel most of us will not really appreciate the compression feature, but we will definitely appreciate the uncompressing feature that they added to the files application. We download zipped files a lot. And it's really been a pain trying to unzip our files on the iPad. And now you can just unzip your file immediately and zipping files on the iPad has really been a massive pain for a very long time but now we can safely say that those painful days are over. So a lot of applications now have this option to save your notes to files and I think this is a step in the right direction for a centralized organization system for the iPad and it will just make an iPad much more user friendly. Hopefully in the future most applications will be able to automate this because Right now, you can access your notes all in one place. You just have to get into the habit of saving all the small little changes you make in your notes. You also have to make sure that every time you make changes to your notes, you replace your old notes with the new updated notes. And this can be a bit of work. It can actually be too much work, actually. Yeah, at the moment, it's not very convenient. But if you really, really want to have a centralized organization system for your notes and your iPad in general, it is now quite possible to do that. PDF Expert 7 has managed to integrate very well with the files application. All the complaints I just made just now, you don't have any of those problems in PDF Expert. It doesn't matter if you mark up your notes in your files app or if you edit them in the application, your changes are saved instantaneously when you close the application. So right now I'm going to mark up this document in the files application and I'm going to tap done. Then I will go to PDF Expert 7. And voila, my notes have been saved. If I was to do the same thing in the PDF expert application, I'm going to just add a few things, you know, change it up a little bit, add some information to my file. And I close this file and then go to the files application. This is quite impressive, is it not? This is the kind of integration I hope to see across all the document creating apps in iPadOS. I really love this because I don't have to remember to save my notes every single time I make a change to them. Because let's be honest with each other, we are human beings, sometimes we just forget these things. I am currently using the Adata UC350 USB 3.1 Type-C for transferring my data on my iPad. 
I mostly use the USB to move my audio files from my laptop to my iPad because I edit my audio on my laptop. I still haven't found a way to do that on my iPad. The only complaint I have is that I wish that the files application could come up with some way to let us know the progression of our data transfer when we're using a flash disk. Honestly, besides that, I think the USB support is definitely a welcome support for the iPad and I couldn't be happier. Now, when I'm in class and my professors have information to share from their laptops i'm like <laughs> you can put it on my usb and i'm gonna have it on my ipad in five seconds <laughs> Sometimes when I want to add some information, when I want to add some documents or files into certain applications, it can make certain files unavailable for adding or for accessing through certain applications. While this makes sense, like for example, obviously I can't add videos to GoodNotes 5. The application simply has no way of reading video files or, you know, or playing them. I get that. But sometimes the application makes mistakes and sometimes I can actually open that file in GoodNotes 5 but I just can't access it through the files application. The files application should just be a file managing application that just has all the documents available. Let each application determine whether or not it can open files for you instead of having that done for you by your file managing application. And that brings me to the end of this video. What features excites you the most in the new files application? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.